Every day, more and more people go on social media instead of talking, during parties, at the dinner table, and even when you're spending time with all your family. Occasional hangouts with friends can end up with silent rooms and loss of conversation. Social media not only has a big impact in the societies of the world, but has an impact on our own social skills. People begin to have problems with talking face to face, becoming more isolated, and it causes health problems. So how much time do you spend on social media? Probably like mm, out of 24 hours, maybe like 16 to 18 because I'm either on my laptop or on my phone. So yeah. Is social media important to you? If so, how? I think it is important because it's a way to keep in touch with my friends, see what they're doing. Sometimes it's not um, beneficial to me, but it's nice to see how everyone's doing. And, yeah. Do you think social media makes us antisocial or not? Why? I think it depends on the situation because if you're with your friends, you should be talking to your friends, you know. But if you're just on your phone or your iPad or whatever, you're not really being social and it distracts you from doing what you really want to do. The first question is, how much time do you spend on social media? Uh, in a day? Mm, maybe an hour or so. Okay. Is social media important to you? If so, how? It's important to me because, well, for example, Facebook. I have friends um, from different states and family from different countries, and that's how I stay, stay connected with them. So that part is important for me, to be able to connect with friends and family. Do you think social media makes us antisocial or not? Why? It actually depends. Uh, for myself, I don't think so because I know when to put it down. And I like making relationships with people, talking to people. So I know when to put it away or put it aside. Recently, Ramika tweeted a question to YouTubers Will Derbyshire and Arden Rose for a Q&A they filmed. This was their response to the question. Yes. Well, because it's like an excuse to not talk to people. Yeah. Like if you're in an uncomfortable situation, like 10 years ago, you would just have to suck it up and talk to people. Yeah. yeah. But now you can be like, hmm, Instagram. I mean, I find myself doing it. Like you're sitting at dinner with someone and you're like, oh, I just need to check mm -hmm. Twitter or Facebook or something. That's like my pet peeve though. Yeah. I'm super old fashioned. Like I hate it when people are on their phone when yeah. I'm like hanging out with them. Cyberbullying is caused when some person decides to bully someone online. It is the leading cause of suicide, killing many young adults. Some statistics from the Megan Fi Meyer Foundation say that 38% of frequent bully victims reported suicidal thoughts or actions. The effects of social media not only link to cyberbullying, but also to many health problems. According to the 2010 Proceedings of the SIGCHI Conference on Human Factors, in computing systems, social media users who consume a lot of content not only become more prone to loneliness, but they, also, but they are also more prone to negative thoughts and to a negative lifestyle. This quote shows that people who use social media a lot become prone to loneliness, and negative thoughts, and to a negative lifestyle. Additionally, according to a recent study, Mobile Mindset by Lookout, most social media users would have anxiety or feel more overwhelmed without having social media right at their fingertips. If someone already has an anxiety issue, social media can cause even more of a problem and sets more complications that can stop them from having a better life. On the other hand, social media also has been a tool for connecting friends over the internet. and ask 
will bring it up. Social media creates a way to stay in contact with your friends you make online. Many people would have trouble talking to people verbally, and Twitter, Facebook, or Instagram can be their escape. Not only can you stay connected with others, you can also stay up to date with news alerts and trends. According to social media, the new news source, over 50% of people have learned about breaking news via social media rather than official news sources, and 46% of people get their news online at least three times a week. However, the accessibility of social media is another problem. While doing an assignment, a person could easily open another tab and log on to Twitter, Facebook, Tumblr, etc. People can become distracted very easily by the social sites on the internet. According to Mastering Multitasking, written by Urs Gasser and John Palfrey, a field study found that computer users spent on average nearly 10 minutes switching from one task to another when they got an alert of an incoming email or an instant message. Depending on the interruption, they spent another 10 to 15 minutes before returning to this disrupted task. Spending time on technology for a long time is a big waste of time. In conclusion, the use of social media is in the hands of the user. He or she can use it whatever way he or she likes, even overuse it if they want to, but will ultimately pay the price. The price can range from getting, just getting angry to depression and suicide, but if you use it sparingly, it will be a great source of everything, such as contact with family. So use it wise and use it well. It's your choice how to use social media, socially or antisocially. Remember, you control social media. Social media doesn't control you.